here, The Frugal Crafter. Today on Stamp School, I'm gonna show you how to mirror stamp your stamps, including your layering stamps, which can be a little tricky to work with. This video is brought to you by Tupelo Designs. You can pick up this stamp set there, along with other fun layering stamps and all kinds of other great stuff. And it's a birthday month, so they have got some really great uh, deals going on. Of course, as always, free shipping on every order, and all orders, regardless of size, will get a 2017 desk calendar that's worth 15 bucks, a Ranger mini ink blending tool, and if your order is over $20.17, you'll get a free clear stamp that's valued at $15. So don't wait. Uh, you'll want to definitely want to order this month so you can take advantage of those deals. Your free gifts will ship separately because they're actually were so popular that they had to order more. So you're gonna, <laughs> those will ship out later. Uh, they're also having a Valentine's sale, which is perfect timing because this is a Valentine card. So you're going to be um, using a variety of, of materials. You probably have a lot of these at home or something that you can use. We're going to be stamping on just some smooth white cardstock, which I have right here. And um, layering stamps, if you've never used them before, basically you build a picture by um, stamping like a base layer and then either one or two layers of detail on top. So what I have here are my stamps on little uh, little blocks. And I like to start with my um, with my most solid stamp. So you can see this one has a little bit of detail on it. And this one is really solid. And I'm going to ink that up with some yellow ink. And this is just um, Dandelion from Memento. Any sort of like bright yellow I think will be good. Now sometimes if I'm doing my base layer super, super light, I'll do my second layer first and then take, stamp on the base layer if I think it's going to be difficult to see um, what I'm stamping on top. But but generally I do stamp this bottom layer first. So I'm going to stamp this pretty close to the edge. And a little trick here when you are stamping, um, give time for your ink to transfer onto the paper. So I like to, um, I like to just hold it for like about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so to make sure that I'm going to get a really good impression. So now I need to uh, stamp the next layer. So I have that right here and I'm going to ink that up into with a nice orange. This is called Tangelo. Now you can see that. And just give it a good all over inking here. Don't worry if it's not absolutely perfect. You can use a stamp positioner for this, but when you go to mirror it, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to leave that crutch behind because <laughs> you're gonna need to be a little more flexible. Um, and I don't use a stamp positioner generally. I just I just eyeball it. Generally though, I will tell you, I have my, I'm like on my head right above looking straight down so I can line it up better. For a video, obviously, I don't want my head in the way so I'm sitting back so it's probably not going to be perfectly lined up, but it's good enough. You can see it's a fish, it's got detail, it's pretty darn cute. Okay, so now, um, oh also I want to put this cute little fish face on there. <laughs> I thought this would be cute to make it look like these little fishes were kissing. So that's why I got the idea of a Valentine's card. So I'm just going to stamp this little face on. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh, I love Hero Arts layering stamps. That's the flamingo one. I was thinking about using the flamingo one. Where's that one? Right here. Also, they have that at uh, Tupelo Designs. Hopefully they're not sold out because I had it this morning when I checked. But uh, I just thought that was really cute too because I got another flamingo set to go with it. Um, but uh, but no, I, I actually ended up liking, liking this with just the fish. Okay, so for my mirror, because this is a layering stamp set, we need to be able to see our layers as we stamp them. Now, you may have had a stamp, a mirror stamp before back in the day, which was just like a wooden stamp that just was a like solid rubber piece. Or do, do you ever have those? You remember those? Well, um, you can use one of those, but with layering stamps, it's really difficult to get the stamp exactly where you want it. But then I found my jelly plate, and I thought, you know what? The, I bet the jelly plate would work really well, and turns out it does. If you don't have a jelly plate, if you have a really big, clear stamp, um, you can use that. You just need a big piece of like rubber basically that you could uh, clear rubber that you could stamp on. You could probably even try like acetate or something like that. Um, but you're with a like squishy material, like a gel plate, you're going to have much more of a um, forgiving surface. So what I'm going to do first is ink up my base layer again with the yellow ink. And I just re-inked all my ink pads so they're nice and juicy. Oh, and if you have any issues when you're stamping up, when you're inking up your um, stamp, if it's a like a clear stamp, you can always like rub it with an eraser and that will help. Oh, I just got, I don't know where that ink came from. Well, we're just going to move this over here. Hopefully I can work that into the design. <laughs> work on this side here. So what I'm doing, I'm just going to move that right out of the way so you can see. I'm stamping this on my gel plate. So I've got my, my stamp on its block and I'm going to press it right onto the gel plate. 
try not to let it slip and then lift it up and it's going to be oh, kind of hard to see and then what you're going to do is bring your cardstock back and you are going to press it down on your paper and the nice thing about the gel press and you can also use a creative palette um, any sort of like printmaking pad like this that you can see through is going to work good I like this because it's kind of flexible. I don't have to put it on a block and I can kind of walk my fingers over it and make sure everything's getting pressed to the paper. Now, the caveat to this is that your second, your, your, your impression off the mirror, and I'm going to clean this right now before I get that blue ink on anything else. I'm going to clean off my, uh, my stamping ink I just put on there. Um, you want to make sure that, that this kind of matches that and it's going to stamp lighter this way so to correct this what i'm going to do is take a marker and this yellow marker and i'm going to go in and i am just going to deepen the color so i'm just since this is the base layer that's very bold i'm just going to go in and fill in with this marker i'm just leaving any spots like any de detail spots not not uh, colored in so i'm just going to go in through here um, these I've had these markers for a year and a half these are the spectrum aqua I do like them and they do sell those at Tupelo um, I do notice it on some of my colors that I've used a lot um, they are starting to wear so I think it's probably I'm gonna be gonna need to replace some of these shortly okay so now I've got that yellow about as bright as that first yellow was so there's my first tip is to re go back in with like a marker and um, fill in if you have to so that's gonna that's gonna solve some problems that you might come across now the other thing because I said that remember it's gonna stamp lighter off the jelly plate so instead of using this tangelo ink like I did on that one I'm actually gonna go a, a shade darker and I'm gonna use Morocco so this is kind of like a um, like a tangerine orange this is more like a um, kind of blood orange color it's a little more red so I need that because I know it's not gonna push quite as much ink um, so I'm doing this to make sure that I can kind of account for that. So I'm inking this up. Oh, I love fresh ink pads. And then I'm going to press, I'm going to put this on my jelly plate. I like to do it around the edge. It's just a little easier for me to line up, but you can stamp it however feels comfortable. Again, I just like to make sure I'm making contact everywhere. There we go. And then I'm going to put this down and just do your best, you know? I mean, it's not gonna be absolutely perfect. But that's part of the reason it looks handmade and really fun. And there we go. So now we have a mirror image of that same fish. It's pretty darn close. Now you can go in and do a little more detail with um, like an orange marker if you wanted to. Uh, I think that I think that's going to be all right, uh, especially after like the, it, the ink dries and it kind of mellows out a little bit. I am going to go in with a pen. Instead of trying to mirror image the little face, I'm going to go in with a pen and I am just going to draw my little features here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to kind of eyeball, eyeball the eyeballs basically. Um, maybe I'll give this like fish a little smiley face on this side and get that in there. And then of course, if you have any, um, any problems you can you can go in and fix it you can tidy up lines with your with your orange marker or whatever you want to do so the next tip I have for you is using um, distress ink sometimes you just don't have uh, the color ink for stamping that you want and sometimes when you try to stamp with the distress ink it'll want to bead up on your on your um, stamp so what you can do to overcome that is to use um, embossing ink so I've got this Versamark ink here now you can also do this trick anytime you have a dye base ink and you want to heat emboss with it this will make the ink so it's embossable um, but I just like it because it makes the distress ink stick to my stamp a lot easier so now I'm just going to tap this on just like I would any ink pad. Now if this is too dark, you can always stamp it off on a scrap piece of paper. Um, but I'm just going to go right in because I think this is all right. And I'm going to stamp these. So these are kind of like my bubbles. I didn't want to use round bubbles. I thought it'd be cool to use hearts. And we'll let that dry. And um, I'm going to go and trim out this. Actually, before I trim that out, I think I want to write Happy Valentine's Day because I didn't have a Happy Valentine's Day stamp handy. I'm just going to go in with this blue and just write it in cursive here. And I'm just going to try to keep it along the edge so I can just trim it out in a strip. And that is my fanciest handwriting. I'm going to go cut the strip off and trim this out and then I'll show you how to put the card together.
I decided I wanted to add some of this uh, kind of seafoam green color uh, to accent my words here. I don't have the best handwriting in the world, but um, I find that if I do just something very simple, then add a few little accent lines of ink, it really kind of makes it special and makes it look kind of like I know what I'm doing. I also wanted to stamp some of those hearts over this, but I think I'll do that in pink because I don't really have a lot of traditional uh, Valentine's colors going here. That way I'll just have a little bit better of a more of a Valentine look to it. I'm just using this uh, angel pink from Memento. I could do it, it would look pretty in orange too, I imagine, um, but I do have some pink in the pattern paper that I'm going to be using, so I think that this would be just fine to use. You can see here, I didn't need to prime this. Uh, ink with the embossing ink because this is an ink designed for stamping. Distress ink is more designed for special effects, so um, so that's why I wanted to to prime that. I am going to just notch the end, end a little bit here. I don't have a lot of room to do that, but I do like the effect that it gives. And I'm just going to trim a little bit off on this end. And now I am going to use my ink here to ink the edges of this. And this is a brand new ink pad so it's super juicy. I am going to do the same here. And I gotta be careful because I always stick my finger in an ink pad before I'm done and I'm just gonna try not to get that ink on my uh, on my focal point because I was lucky enough that that big blue ink splat from my gel plate uh, actually came off of it. So uh, I actually was trimmed off. So I was really lucky there. Uh, my favorite ink blending tool is the, um, the color dusters because I find that I just get much better control with a brush than I do a sponge. Personally, some people are really crazy talented at using sponges, but I just, I just feel like I can't go wrong when I've got the uh, when I got the dusters. So that's what I like to use. You can use whatever you like. I'll link up all the supplies I can uh, to our sponsor too below in the video description. So make sure you check out that for to find the stuff that I'm using. Now I am going to mat this and then grab our other pieces that we're going to use together here. And so for other supplies, I've got my heavyweight weight cardstock. I like to use a heavy cardstock whenever possible because it just makes the it makes the card feel so much more luxurious if you've got a nice heavyweight cardstock. I'm inking my edges there. And I didn't do this on the other card, but I really think the inking the edges makes a big difference. So I'm going to do that to uh, these as well. I'm really thinking that I'm liking mini ink pads a lot more than this than the standard size these days. Especially, I think it's probably because I'm working upstairs in my office and I don't have all the space I do downstairs in my studio, but um, but boy, it's so handy to be able to have, especially if you're working with layering stamps, I think, um, a, a variety of ink pads at your fingertips. So I'm just gonna uh, adhere these down. And what I like to do, I've already trimmed these so I can fit these three patterns, uh, panels of paper there on my, um, on my card. So what I'm gonna do is just put my two edge ones down I like to do that because then I can just put my center one in the middle and it just seems to be a lot easier to line things up that way. So I'm going to put that there. I'll do this bubbly one. This paper is by American Crafts, by the way. I think it's kind of pretty. I love their papers. I like the quality, I like the feel of their papers and the weight of their papers. And we're going to do this one in the center here. I like that too because that kind of looks like, um, it kind of looks, I'm going to turn it around because I think the bottom part might get covered up by my sentiment. Um, it just looks kind of like lemonade and pink lemonade to me. I just, oh yeah, it's January. I'm taking all those bright colors I can. And we're going to mount that on top. Just like so. Now another fun thing that I like is, um, I like to find unusual supplies or use supplies in different ways. And I found these in the floral department of Big Box Craft Store. And what they are is uh, little acrylic gems that you would put in like a flower arrangement, like a vase. And I think they're really pretty on cards to use with bubbles. 
Before I do that though, I'm gonna use a gel pen and I'm gonna make little highlights on my hearts so they look a little bit more like bubbles. So I'm gonna do like kind of a, a curved line up there and two dots in the bottom. If I can fit it, some of those are kind of small. You could also sketch little hearts and make them look like bubbles. That would be totally pretty. And while that's drying, um, I am going to figure out where I want my sentiment to go. And I think I'm gonna have it kind of like that, kind of going kitty corner. And I want to attach it with a brad uh, because I love brads. I have quite a few and my one of my goals is to kind of use up some old stash. And where is my little, my little square brad? I loved these brads because um, and they probably still make them, somebody probably does, um, because there's a nice flat area where I could like write an initial or put a rub on or um, or something. And I figured since this is a Valentine's card, but it's not like overly Valentine-y and I feel like I need a little bit more theminess to it, I can go in and use my marker and I can draw a little heart. And it's a permanent marker, so it won't rub off. And we're going to use these permanent markers for something else in just a second. So when I need to glue an embellishment down, uh, my favorite glue for this is Beacon 2-in-1. And um, it's kind of like, uh, or 3-in-1, sorry, <laughs> it's my favorite, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, I like it because it's almost like a cold hot glue. It's nice and thick and it just, it dries really quickly, which is really important for me. If a, if a product doesn't dry quickly, I tend not to use it because I am kind of, um, a bit of a klutz when it comes to the craft room and projects and like I love the look of stickles but I can't use stickles because I always smear my hand in them before I'm done even when I think I've set them you know in a safe place out of sight I still manage to get my my hands in them so the fact that this is going to be not slipping and sliding around is perfect just like the white gel pen I love that because it's dry so quick I don't have to uh, worry about um, getting my finger in it. The only downside to this is like after you squeeze it sometimes it still is like letting glue come through. It's like it gets a bubble and then the glue just keeps on seeping out the end. So that's the only thing you have to watch out for. It's like you need to stop squeezing and put it upright before you're done gluing your last thing because more glue is going to keep on keep on coming out. And I'm just trying to decide where I want that. I think I want this one a little off to the side. But you can feel it already start to grab. Since I have all this extra glue, I think I'm just going to put it under that sentiment strip because it's kind of just hanging there. And spread it with a... Yeah, spread it with a Q-tip. Luckily I had that on my table. See what I mean? I always make a mess. But this glue's pretty forgiving. I feel I can get those kind of strings and pull them off before they do any damage. Now, this will set up in just a second. And then what I can do is grab a permanent marker and I can go right ahead and just add a little color to it. I just slipped and I went onto the uh, the cardstock. But uh, once that's dry, you could just kind of go on and glaze a little bit. This is They're still wiggling a little bit because it's only been a second, but I mean, Wait about five minutes and those will be glued ni down nice and securely so you can color it without any issue. But I love how it looks like actual real bubbles or water drops on your project. One other tip I want to share with you, um, if you are working with stamps that are not the highest quality and you can kind of tell how high quality the stamp is by, well for one, sometimes when you when you smell it, it'll smell a little bit sweet. Not always anymore, I've noticed. Sometimes I don't, I don't notice the, the smell in the stamps. But if your stamps stain, that means that they're grabbing ink and they're the higher quality stamps. If you're trying this technique and it's not working very well and you notice your stamps don't stain, um, you probably have the the lesser expensive clear stamps that just they just don't grab the ink as well. And I was experimenting this with another flamingo set that I have because I was thinking I would mix the Hero Art one, which is really cute and really high quality, with this one I just got that was, um, you know, cheaper. But when I tried to, um, my, the, my first impression was that right off the stamp was this one right here, and I was like, oh boy. So then I, I uh, rubbed it up with an eraser, and I got a much better impression. Um, 
so then I thought, okay, now I'll try it on the jelly plate to kind of reverse it, and it was just very splotchy and not very usable. It, it did stand fine after I scuffed it all up with the eraser and did it the normal way, but if I was going to try to reverse the image on one of the cheaper clear stamps, it just does not work like you'd want. So, um, so this technique is definitely best for your uh, higher quality clear stamps, such as the Hero Arts or the Alta New, and I know there's lots of other ones. If you have a recommendation of a really great clear layering stamp set, please leave it in the comments below or, or a company that makes really good quality clear stamps. I haven't used them all, um, and I haven't used that many brands of layering stamps, but um, um, these Hero Art ones are fantastic, so I can definitely recommend them. I will link to the products that I used in the video description, and I want to thank our sponsor Tupelo Designs, and remind you that they have their birthday month specials going on, free shipping as always on every single order, plus a free desk calendar and a uh, free mini ink blending tool with every order, and if you spend over 2017, you get a free stamp valued up to $15, so lots of goodies for shopping there. And uh, don't forget Valentine's sale. We did a Valentine card. I should be able to remember that. <laughs> Hopefully you will too. So I'm not exactly sure what's on sale with the Valentine's Day sale, but I did just find out about it. So I'm going to go check it out as soon as I'm done work for the day. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and share this video with a crafty friend who you think would enjoy it. I think mirror stamping makes our stamps more versatile. It's like having double the stamps in every stamp set when you use this technique. So give it a try. If you don't have a uh, gel press or a gel printing plate, you can use any large clear stamp if you have a big clear shadow stamp or anything like that. Or if you have a big stamp, have you ever noticed like if you look on the back of like your clear stamp, you've got this nice big amount of like flat area. If you've got a big background stamp, try it with that. As long as the design is packed closely together, it should work just fine. Be creative. Look at what you have because you can just flip that right over. Flip it over backwards on your block and use that as your mirror stamp. It, there's a lot of versatility there. I'm sure you can find something in your stash that will work. Somebody did ask me the other day if um, the clear printing block that I picked up would work for this. I tried it. It worked all right. Not as good as a jelly plate or a clear stamp would though. So just wanted to give you that information in case you were waiting to find out. Like, Thanks again for watching. Thanks Tupelo Designs for sponsoring this episode of Stamp School. And until next time, happy grafting.